Hi, Chris Maloof with Cross Country Mortgage here. Uh, had some friends and family and some clients reach out to me. Um, they've been hearing this word tapering in the news quite a bit. So I thought I'd do a quick educational video on what is tapering, how is it affecting markets, how does it affect rates, all that good stuff. So long way around the barn, what the Federal Reserve has been doing uh, since the uh, coronavirus outbreak has been injecting uh, money into the economy just to kind of keep it going uh, to the tune of about $120 billion per month on average. So they've been putting money into the economy to kind of keep it going. $40 billion of that has been going to mortgage-backed securities. So the Federal Reserve has been purchasing mortgage-backed securities and putting them on its balance sheet uh, to keep capital going into uh, the marketplace, uh, increasing liquidity, and then consequently that's driven interest rates down you know, to around historic lows. Um, so that's what's been happening. Now here, September 20th, 21st, the Federal Reserve had its, uh, one of its monetary policy meetings and coming out of that meeting, uh, they've kind of hinted that they're going to start to taper. And taper means they're simply going to start pulling back on the amount of money that they're putting into the economy. So they're going to start reducing the amount of mortgage-backed securities and treasuries that they're purchasing. They're going to start to taper that or reduce the amount of money that they're putting in the economy. And then one of the consequences of that is interest rates are more than likely going to start going up. OK, uh, so folks have asked me, you know, is now the time to refinance? What's going on with markets? All that good stuff. So if you've been on the fence about a refinance, here are some common reasons uh, that my clients come to me to um, to refinance and all that. Uh, one, obviously, is to lower your interest rate. You know, lower interest rate, you're paying less interest. Uh, that's saving you money. That's a good thing. That's pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, number two would be to consolidate high interest debt. You know, if you're carrying a lot of credit card debt or high interest uh, student loan debt, now might be a good time to consolidate all that into a significantly lower interest rate. Uh, number three uh, would be to lower your monthly payments and free up some cash flow. You know, if you feel like you're living paycheck to paycheck and having a hard time just kind of breathing, doing a refinance right now and getting a lower mortgage payment and wiping off some of that debt could free up a good amount of money each month and kind of give you some breathing room, so to speak. OK, uh, number four, home improvements. You know, a lot of folks, real estate uh, has appreciated through this period um, and it's kind of gone through the roof, which is one of the um, uh, the other consequences of this tapering. Um, but there's no inventory. So folks have a lot of equity in their house, but if they sell, they could sell at a high price, but they have nowhere to go. There's not a lot of inventory out there. So now might be a good time for a home improvement project. You know, put in a deck, put in a garage, uh, finish a basement is a pretty popular one. And again, you're using money or you're borrowing money at a significantly lower interest rate um, for those home improvement projects. So down the road, when you can sell your house and there's inventory out there and you find something you can get into, now your home's worth more because you've done those, those improvements. Uh, number five, if you've got existing rental properties, um, you know, again, if you can lower your payment, uh, mortgage payment on those rental properties to the lowest possible interest rates, historically rents go up over time. You know, I have never heard of a landlord that cuts rent or reduces rent, right? So if you've got your mortgage payment and your interest rate as low as absolutely possible and your rents are going up over the course of time, that's what's called spread. That's your profit, right? What you're bringing in from rents minus what you got to pay against it on a loan, there's your profit. So that can add up to big bucks over the course of time. Uh, number six, a lot of folks don't think of this as pay for college. You know, I had a client that had two daughters. One was out of school. One was two years into school. The interest rates on their student loans were around six, seven percent. So we use some of the equity in their home to pay off those high interest rates uh, on the student loans. And that saved them a truckload of money over the course of time. And they're going to get out of those loans significantly quicker because the payments are lower. OK, so there's some some kind of common examples on why folks do a refinance. Uh, if you got any questions, we've got good information on your website. Uh, I would encourage you to check that out. The resource center on our blog. There's good stuff out there. Uh, if you got any questions, you know, feel free to ping me with an email. I'll be happy to help. Uh, and of course, we're here to help you with your financing needs. So and I apologize for the handwriting. I'm a recovering accountant. I am not an artist. OK, so don't hesitate to reach out.